Hey guys, so today we put in the subfloor and I am in the process of painting um, the sides of the van for rust. So I'm gonna go over all of that with you guys. I'm a little disappointed. I videoed us installing the floor and didn't realize that my camera actually wasn't running. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about what we did today. We cut the wood for the subfloor using the original floor as a template. If you recall, we had this black floor in the van originally that's been pulled out and uh, we took three pieces of four by eight plywood, um, half inch plywood and cut that using this template. I apologize for not showing you guys cutting. I actually had to leave and so my friend Jeremy did the cuts for me while I was gone. So you can see that this fit in really well. Um, once we got to this back piece where the wheel wells are, it was a bit tight because of the spray foam on the wheel well. So me being me, I got a little bit, uh, I don't know, excited and decided, oh, I can just put my weight on this thing and push it right down. Well, I can, but unfortunately, I busted up our spray foam a bit on the wheel well, so I'll have to buy some spray foam uh, to fix that. And then we have one section here that didn't fit quite right, I was digging into the spray foam. Um, and so I'll just actually, if I need it, I'll put a little bit of wood there or um, a filler of some sort or spray foam, whatever. But realistically, I don't think it's going to matter because just a little bit this side of that seam is where the bed is gonna go. So that's gonna be storage back there anyway. I'm really more concerned about how all of this went in and this part of the floor just went in beautifully. What I'm doing right now is I'm dealing with the scratches on the metal that came from um, cleaning up the spray foam. So you guys may remember from a previous video, I did a little bit of this and I shouldn't have, I should have waited. I wasn't thinking um, that when they did the spray foam in order to get everything really nice and tight and even that we were going to have to use a metal scraper. So all of this is scraped off and I have to go in with some rust protection to, um, to deal with that. So what I'm using for this one is, and this is backwards I realize, but it's Miracle Rust Pre Preventative. It's just an inexpensive um, spray paint that um, I'm using and I actually went with gray, which might seem silly, but I got tired when I was doing this before, I got tired of spray foaming, or I'm sorry, spray foaming, I got spray foam on the brain. I got tired of painting things and then it would dry and I didn't realize where I had painted. So I would spend time going around and looking for where I had painted. Um, all of this is gonna be covered up so it really doesn't matter. So I'm going in with the gray and we're gonna get all of these nasty nicks that are hotbeds for rust covered up and we'll be good to go. Hallelujah, I found a mask today um, because the last time I used this all this spray paint, I got done and my nose hairs were all white and stuck together. Um, so we can avoid that, thank goodness.
to have all these wires out of my way. I'm constantly running into them. They're pulling my hair out. I'm tripping over them. Oh, I'm so ready. Yeah, so that's great. I got a lot done. I don't know if I have spray paint in my nose hairs. I have no idea. So I'm gonna go touch up um, any final pieces of that spray paint that I feel like I need to do. So, so much accomplished. Okay, I wanna show you guys how I fixed the spray foam um, that I messed up. So as you can see, I've got some spray foam in a can and it's a mess right now because I got it everywhere. Um, but what I did was I just put on some gloves, some uh, rubber gloves and sprayed um, foam around the areas that needed it and then literally just acted like I was putting frosting on a cake and stuffed it in there. It'll continue to expand over the next 24 hours. Um, maybe not quite that long actually, but once it's all formed and dry, then I'll scrape it down and we should be good. It's very sticky for anybody that has never worked with spray foam in order to get it off your hands. Um, you have to use acetone, so just keep that in mind. And once it gets on your clothes, they're disgusting and probably trash. And once you finish with the can, unless you want to take the time to figure out how to uh, keep it from getting clogged up, it's almost like a one-time use product. So, something to keep in mind. All right, because I have the energy and the time, I'm gonna start screwing this slub, this slub floor down, or subfloor, as some of you others may no, um, I happen to have some one and five eighths inch screws, deck screws, um, in my little goodie box over there. So I'm going to use those. So what I have done, sure that I know where my studs are. Um, I've marked them there, and then I'm going to use this board as a guide going up. All right, hold on. Had to clean you guys off. So two things just happened. One, my beer was frozen and I spilled it everywhere. And two, I've gotten screws into the subfloor. So let's take a look at those. I don't know why I'm talking to you like this. So as I said, I marked off where the studs are underneath. And I've got my screws in. I will tell you that this little thing right here is a lifesaver. Um, to be honest, it's a little long, but my bit's a little bit long. If it were a little bit shorter, I could use this one, but, um, I didn't want to go digging for my other drill bit. So this really helps once you get the screw in, you can keep it even and then screw it in there and you don't have to fight with the drill, um, or the screw to get that in. So what I've got is I've got one here along this side. I've got one there along the top. I've got one along that edge. I'm gonna do one along the front edge and then I'm gonna come in and fill in a few um, throughout just to make sure that everything is nice and stable. But as you can see, this is not going anywhere. Um, and the five or the one and five eight screws are perfectly safe to use for this half inch. Um, plywood with um, the half inch studs. I thought they would be a little bit long, so of course I double, triple checked myself a few times to make sure that they were not coming through. They would be right in this area if they were coming through and they are not and so all is well and I'm really happy. So I'm going to finish out this subfloor and I think that's going to be it for today. So we've got rain coming literally the next five to seven days. Um, you can see it's already starting to cloud up a bit. Um, so my thought is um, I'm going to work on the subfloor. I'm going to get that done today. That'll be it for today. Um, I've got a lot accomplished today, actually. And I only had about four total hours to work on it. So I'm, I'm really happy with the progress um, because we've got rain coming and um, I can work inside the garage. I can work on um, getting the framing pieces cut 
and then um, can move those into the van and start putting up some of the side framing for the walls. So, um, and those will be going along um, the sections here to support the walls when those go in. And then I'm gonna look at the ceiling. I'm not sure that I need to frame the ceiling because I'm going to be using um, like a pine paneling. It almost looks like um, wainscoting or um, shiplap. And so um, I think those might be two different things. Anyway, forget that. It's gonna look like shiplap. So because we've got all of these different studs that are running the length of the van all the way across, I feel like I can um, use just those to put that up. So I'm not going to frame out anything on the ceiling now I'm just going to frame out the walls um, and then I'll cross that bridge. When I come to it, if I need to go back in and add wood, then I will do that. So that is where we're at. My really on, only concern with um, where we are with the build right now is the shower. So I've got a bunch of cardboard. I'm going to build out a faux shower stall so that I can test the sizing. Um, there are so many different sizes of shower pans that you can get and then there's also you can customize shower pans you can make them yourself so i just need to see exactly what i want to do the composting toilet that's going to go in the shower is 21 inches by 19 inches so 19 inches deep 21 inches wide um and so obviously i need something bigger than that and um that's definitely too small for a shower so it will be something bigger than that to uh to hold me um, but I also want to make sure that I'm very comfortable with how much space I'm going to be taking up because the shower is going to go right here behind the driver's seat and um, the original size that I had looked at was a 28 by 40 to be honest I think that's going to be a little bit long so the one I'm looking at right now I believe is a 22 by 28 um, but that might be too small. So I need to measure it out and stand in it and see what I think. So that might be um, another project for one of the rainy days. And then um, figuring out the draining and the plumbing for the shower is something that I'm just not, I haven't crossed that bridge yet. I don't know what that looks like yet. I don't think it's gonna be difficult. I just need to come up with a plan. All right, I think that's it for today, you guys. Thanks so much and I'll talk to you later. Bye.